Greetings everybody, this is Pastor Worthy. I wanted to just stop in for a moment and just extend a personal invitation to you. Join us at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, October 18th, 19th, and 20th at 7 o'clock p.m. as we celebrate our fall revival here at St. James Church. We are indeed excited and looking forward to another grand and glorious time of word, worship, and fellowship. Our praise team will be in place each night at 7 o'clock lifting up the praise and worship. We'll have guest choirs raising the praise in song each night. And we are so privileged and excited to announce that returning to St. James again for our fall revival will be none other than the preaching ability of the Reverend Dr. Peter Martin Ware, the very fine pastor of the Mayfield Memorial Baptist Church of the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. You will not want to miss our fall revival. If there are those of you who need transportation, transportation is available by calling our transportation department. But again, we'd love to see you. October 18th, 19th, 20th, 7 p.m. Fall Revival, St. James Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning, beloved, and welcome to Great Awakenings, the television ministry of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I'm Dr. James T. Worthy, and I am so thankful and grateful that you've taken this Saturday morning to tune in to the worship and witness of the St. James Church. Listen, the excitement is mounting here at St. James as we are getting ready for Fall Revival 2016, which will be held Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, October 18th through the 20th, at 7 p.m. nightly. We are so excited to have back with us again this year for Fall Revival, the preaching ability of the Reverend Dr. Peter Huery, the pastor of the Mayfield Memorial Baptist Church in the city of Charlotte. And this morning's broadcast, we're going to feature a message that Dr. Huery preached in last year's Fall Revival. And I want you to tune in now and get ready to see what we will be experiencing in October. Right now, without any further ado, Let's go to the sanctuary for today's broadcast. My heart with love and then he wrote my name above. I found out what I was going through. Just a little talk. With Jesus, we'll make things all right. Your testimony will remind you of how the last horrible thing you went through the last terminal thing you went through the last dead end you went through the last locked door you went through the last bridge too far you crossed over the last high mountain you scaled the last deep ocean you walked through god brought you through that before and he can do it again he's still god your testimony will remind you he's still god your testimony will remind you he still sits high he still looks low your testimony will remind you that your enemies are not in charge. We give our enemies and our problems too much dominion in our lives. It's time to take that authority back and testify about the goodness of God. If you want to get power over your problems, you've got to testify. Not only that, if you want to get power over your problems, it is time to worship. Listen, listen, he says, in the sanctuary, verse 14, in the assembly of all his people, I will give him what I have promised. Yeah, th that first 11 verses, I told you, that's testimony. Uh, the last eight verses, though, are worship. Yeah, testimony, Pastor Worthy, is a great introit to worship. Uh, once you start talking about the greatness of God in your everyday reality, it's going to usher you into the presence of just who this God actually is. Yeah, the testimony is all about recounting what God has done for you and where you've been with God. Here, worship is not about that. Worship is about who God is. We worship God most effectively in the assembly of God's 
people. Worship is about who God is. It, it includes sacrifice. It includes thanksgiving. It includes prayer. Worship is a necessary component of just who we are as God's people. You will worship something. Every human will worship something. St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, put it like this. There is, that thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts will not find rest until they rest in thee. Translation a la Peter Wherry, there is a God-shaped hole in every soul. There's something in us that nothing can fulfill except God. Everybody tries to co-opt it. If you listen to the infomercials on the, in the middle of the night, I know y'all don't stay up that late, but if you listen to the infomercials in the middle of the night, every product they sell, watch them the next time you see one. Every product they sell, I saw one on today just as I was leaving the hotel. Some product they were selling, and the one thing they end the commercial with is it will change your life. Yeah, everything, every human is looking for something to change their life because we all have some circumstances that we're in that we need God or a divine power to move us through that's why we end up worshiping amiss we create our own gods don't we I know nobody in St. Philip's creates their own God but I'm just talking in general terms I'm talking maybe about some folk at Mayfield pastor there are some folk in every church however who create their own gods the prophet Isaiah pegged it like this I believe it's in the 43rd chapter he says there are some people who make gods who who craft gods of their own making he said a, a man takes a piece of wood and he cuts a piece of it and puts it in the fire and gets warm he said he takes another piece and he cooks some meat over that wood and then with the rest of the wood that's left he creates himself a god any god that you can handle is not god any god that is so tangible it is tangible like you that's not God any God that drives you from point A to point B and depreciates before you get it off the lot and distracts you from getting to worship on Sunday because you got to wash it before you get there is not God anything that goes out of style when you take it off is not God anything you put on like a mink coat and you still cold is not God anything you idolize anything you place in priority over God anybody you put in front of God they are not God how do I know because the book says that the God we serve is the one who sits high and looks low this God is so high Aunt Jane said you can't get over him he's so low you can't get under him he's so much God that he stepped out of nowhere and out of nothing ex nihilo created everywhere he just spoke his voice and the land appeared he just said let the be and everything was he just stopped his foot and the rocky mountain sprang up he just spat out of his mouth and the Atlantic Ocean swirled its deep currents he just flung his hand and burning stars went into incandescent light sockets he just clapped his hands and the lightning flashed he just so bad he's so much God he's God right by himself he's so much God that if he goes north he, he's everywhere at the same time he ain't like the devil just running to and fro going everywhere no God is everywhere at the same time he's co-eternal with the Holy Ghost and the Son he's just God he's self-existent he don't need no creation nothing and nobody created him before Abraham was he already am he's so much God that if he goes north he'll meet himself coming back south he's so much God he can bless you in Rocky Mount and bless me in Charlotte he can create peace in Africa and he can move hearts in South America he's so much God that he's worthy of our worship if you don't worship somebody like that 
you need more than a sermon tonight. You done bumped your head and lost your mind if you don't worship a God who can bless you with a gallon of water while you got a hole in your bucket. He's so much God. He can feed you when you're hungry. He can heal you when you're sick. He can raise you when you're down. He can bring you in when you're out. He'll be a friend when you're by yourself. If you don't worship a God like that, there's something wrong with you. So the psalmist says, in the assembly of your people, I'm going to give you what I promised. I got to give it to you, God, because if I don't give it to you, that's what Jesus meant when he said, y'all don't make my disciples shut up, because if these don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Listen here, he don't need our worship. Just because we belong to Mayfield Memorial Missionary Baptist Church, he don't need my worship because he's got angels in heaven 24-7, 366, bowing down before him. He's got elders in glory casting crowns in front of him. He's got cherubim and seraphim falling down before him. And they cry, holy, 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 our God is holy. That's why we worship him. Our God is great. That's why we bow to him. Our God is all powerful. That's why we bow to him. Our God knows everything. Yeah, he's worthy of our worship. So the psalmist says in the sanctuary, I'm going to give you what I promised. I'm going to tell you, God, what you mean to me. That's what worship really is. When you get to the church house and you tell God what he means to you. Our worship is corrupted these days because we got too many folk trying to please people. Choir, I want to applaud you because y'all don't sing for people. Thank God for your ministry. Listen here, our, our worship has an audience of one. It doesn't matter to me whether you like my worship. I ain't worshiping you. It doesn't matter to me whether you understand my worship. When I wave my hand, I ain't waving at you. When I dance my dance, I ain't dancing for you. And I ain't looking for that dance partner. Yeah! This God I serve is so much God, I got to bow down. I got to worship him. I got to tell him what he means in my life. That's why I come to the sanctuary. That's what I come here to do. You might not understand what I'm doing, but the old saints used to say it like this. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. That's why worship is going to necessarily include some stuff that folk don't like and don't understand. But it's all right because you ain't worshiping folk. If you worship anybody or anything, anything you put in front of God, that's an idol God. So the psalmist says, no, 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 no idols for me. I'm going to worship you in the assembly of all your people. And you know what? When you worship God like that, it'll give you power over your problems. Worship is not escapism, but worship is confronting your problems realistically, but this time in the presence of God. Samuel D. Witt Proctor says that the church is holy ground, not because it has stained glass and pews and organs and drums and pianos. No, the church is holy ground because the church is where God's people bring their problems. The old folks say, bring your burdens to the Lord. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. That's why the church is holy ground. Wherever God's people struggle and suffer, that's where God is. And anywhere God is can never be the same again. So you get power over your problems when you bring the problems to the worship service. When you worship God for who God is, your problems don't have dominion like they used to. And you'll get power over your problems once you testify and once you worship but don't let this problem that you have steal the main power over your problems uh, verse 8 verse uh, 18 says you can get power over your problems when you worship and then it says when you praise 
Now listen, worship is one thing, but worship is not praise. And praise is not necessarily the exact same thing as worship. Uh, praise is a little different. Here, verse 18, he says, In the assembly of all your people, in the sanctuary of your temple in Jerusalem, I will give you what I have promised. There it is again, that same language. And then he ends the psalm with these three words in English, Praise the Lord. In Hebrew, what he ends that 18th verse with is the Hebrew word hallelujah and the psalmist ends with hallelujah hallelujah is a compound word that includes the verb halal uh, the word halal comes from a root word that means to be clear it, it can mean a clear sound but it can also mean a clear color anything clear it, it's also translated in the Hebrew to shine I, I really think pastor worthy that this word to shine gives an idea of what praise does as far as God is concerned the phrase to cause a person's face to shine indicates bringing pleasure to that person. The word halal has a number of other meanings that are instructive and among them is this sense of being clamorously foolish. Let's put it all together that when you are clear in your praise, that is people know you ain't praising them but you're praising God. When you cause the Lord's face to shine, it is because you have been in your praise praise clamorously foolish. That's why this psalm ends with the word hallelujah and that, Greek, and that Hebrew verb halal because halal means to be clamorously foolish. Now can I make some folk mad tonight? I know I'm going to step on some toes this evening and it's alright. I'm going on back to the post side of the state when this week is over. I just had to stop by here though and let somebody know that a part of praise includes being clamorously foolish uh, now I know everybody has a different way and I want to just unpack that exegetically if I can for a minute to be clamorously foolish to praise God means in essence that one cannot avoid doing something and uh, to be to be clamorously foolish for me might mean one thing but to be clamorously foolish for you might mean something else because your demeanor may be so staid and so serene and usually naturally so stoic and still that to be clamorously foolish to you might just mean clapping your hands. To be clamorously foolish to you might just mean patting your foot. Uh, to be clamorously foolish for some folk means to dance for joy. Uh, to be clamorously foolish in the Old Testament, however, meant that you sometimes have to treat God like David treated God. He danced like, he, to dance, in other words, like David danced. Yeah. David danced so until his wife looked over the balcony at him and got embarrassed at how he was carrying on. Talking about, she was intimating real men, David, don't praise like that. Something must be wrong with you, boy. Something is wrong with you. He danced right out of his clothes. Real praise doesn't look like that, his wife said. David wasn't dancing for her no how. Uh, real praise sometimes looks like what Sister Miriam did when she got on the other side of the water. She collected the sisters together and she had them all to bring their tambourines and they ran through the assembly playing tambourines and dancing and doing a remix of the song Moses had sung. Can I tell y'all something? Praise is comely. Praise is powerful. Powerful. You can get power over your problems sometimes by just praising your way through them. One of the reasons that problems get the best of some of us is that we have surrendered our praise. We have given quarter to the problems and caused the problems, allowed the problems to dominate our affect, the way we look, the way we respond. And you know the enemy is just like a rabid dog. He can smell fear. He will come at you when he thinks, when he, thinks he got you shook and the more you walk through life with your face hung down and your head hung down and every time somebody says something to you how you doing oh fair I'm doing alright but then they start rehearsing this laundry list of aches and pains and stuff that ain't going right in their lives you know my husband is drinking again you know my children done gone crazy you know I had that sciatica and it come back again you know I really wish they would give me a raise on my social security or on my job I ain't had a raise in 10 years years. Every time 
I think I'm about to make one step forward. I end up making no. You sometimes have to just praise your way out of your problems. I know that sounds like an opiate like Karl Marx used to say. But how many know that when you start praising God, you ain't praising God for what you think. You're praising God for what you know. You know that you know that you know. When you came out the last time, it wasn't because you got a good education. When you came out the last time, it was because God is a good God. When you came out the last time, it wasn't because you're so smart, because you're so well connected uptown in Rocky Mountain. No, it's because God made a way out of no way. When you got up off your sick bed the last time, it wasn't because you took 25 pills three times a day. No, doctors can only dress your wound. God is the healer. When you got up the last time, it was because God is a good God. And that's what we praise God for. We worship God for who God is. But we praise God for what God has done. I so look at the 13th verse where the psalmist says, I will thank the Lord for all that he's done, for all of his benefits toward me. I wish I had me three people who would help me just praise the Lord. Not for what I've been through, because you don't know like I know what he's done for me. I wish I had me somebody who would just praise God for what he's done for you. Yeah! I wish I had me somebody who knew how to tell God thank you. Thank you for where you brought me. Thank you for how you taught me. Thank you, Lord, for how you picked me up and turned me around and planted my feet on higher ground. Thank you, Lord, for how you got me out of school. Some folk graduated, come Lordy. I graduated, thank you, Lordy, because I didn't have no money, but you made a way. Yeah! I wish I had me somebody who would have helped me thank the Lord for how he brought you through raising those children sometimes by yourself but he was a mother with you he was a father with you he was a friend that sticks closer than a brother yeah tell God thank you give God praise cause he's worthy he's worthy if I had 10,000 tongues I couldn't thank him for all that he's done so y'all excuse me while I step into my not yet while I'm living in the right now when you praise you set the atmosphere for what God will do tomorrow yeah you praise him now like tomorrow will be better I'm a witness here he will he will Make a way somehow. Yeah. Yes. When you praise him, demons in hell tremble. Cause they know they ain't good like he's good. When you praise him, you lift up heavy burdens. Cause you remember he's a burden bearer. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell him thank you. Just take a few minutes. I'm through now. Can I just testify a while? Can I just look back over yesterday and thank him for what he's done? I dare you to do it. I dare you to think back over your life and some stuff you shouldn't have made it through and start thinking about how grateful you are and start telling God thank you. You might not holler like I'm hollering. It's all right. You just whisper. You just nod your head. If you can't pat your foot, you just wave your hand. If you can't wave your hand, you just rock side to side. If you can't rock side to side, you just tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Testimony, yes. worship, yes. praise, yes. it'll give you power yes. over your problems. Yes. Oh, I know you've been through a lot of problems, 
anybody on this side of the dirt has. But I'm a witness in here tonight. The psalmist is right. When we do what we ought to do toward God. It won't line up every day like we need it to line up. But surely the Lord will bring you through. Maybe somebody here tonight who's tried everything else and perhaps you're at the water's edge between the rock and the hard place tonight. I challenge you. Tonight is the night you can claim power over your problems. Whatever they may be. Well, of course, beloved, we have come to the end of another Great Awakenings broadcast. And as always, it is my prayer that what you have seen and heard today has been a source of inspiration as well as information to empower you in your walk with the Lord. Let me extend a personal invitation to you to join us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James Church is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount. Join us each and every Sunday morning for Sunday morning prayer at 9.30 a.m., Sunday school at 9.45 a.m., and our morning worship experience, which begins promptly at 11 o'clock a.m. For more understanding of the Word of God, we have Bible study each Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. and our midday Bible study on Thursday mornings at 11.30 a.m. If you're in the Rocky Mount area and desire transportation to our worship services on Sunday, all you'll have to do is call our transportation department using the information as you see it listed there on the screen. Someone will make contact with you and will ensure your safe arrival to church on Sunday morning and a safe return home at the end of our worship experience. If today's broadcast has been a blessing to you and you desire to have it on a CD or DVD, our media outreach ministry stands ready to assist you. All you'll have to do is call using the information as you see it and please be sure to request the service number as it is listed on the screen. Someone from our administrative department will make contact with you and will assist you in obtaining your copy of today's worship service for your continued inspiration in the Word of God. As we come to the close of this broadcast, it is my prayer that your life has been blessed, it has been empowered and inspired by the Word of God. Let me give a personal hello and good morning to the staff and residents of the Hunter Hill Nursing and Rehabilitation Center along with those who are viewing the Great Awakenings broadcast in hospitals, nursing homes, convalescent homes, and in their private sick homes. As always, our prayer for you is, is that God would keep you in a perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on Him. Until next Saturday, when we return with another Great Awakenings broadcast, again, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now, henceforth, and always. Have a blessed day. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's up. He's up. Oh, bless his name. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's up. He's up. Let me say it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's up. He's up. Oh, bless his name. This is the day that the Lord has made.